Oh, we are alive, we are alive, we are alive. Fab's funded love, we are alive, live, live. Fab's funded blood, we are alive. Fab's funded blood, we are alive. Yes. So it looks like I'm in the dark. So I guess I'm going to have to switch because it's not going to work. Okay, let me figure this out. Oh. Maybe that shall work. Because we need some sun. Now that might work. Okay, that thing is good. Go sit down. Okay, let me see. All right, I'm figuring it out, y'all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, expecting a guest. Shop Yard, Jill Williams, Tennessee, Toaster, Rico, Mullen. Thank you, man. Thank you. So, you know, I have a special guest coming in today. Uh, I'm trying to adjust this thing. Let me see. Maybe. Better. Better. Oh, you see this? No point intended. Okay, maybe I'll put it higher. It's best. All right. Okay. I'll be right back, y'all. Right back. I gotta let her, gotta let my guest in. Right there, y'all. Trying to get some stuff that we get ready. Some coconut, coconut water for my guest. Okay. All right. Papers gonna be sitting there. Hi. JPM. Ah, it's the light. Okay. Thank you. Cool. It's a tough one, y'all. Trying to get that light. Because mm -hmm. I want to have a shot as well. We should be here and we can cut that way. <laughs> Deal with it. All right, um, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you for the support. I love that. I love the fact that you guys are here. Uh, April Sutton, for those who don't know, she came during the Grammy show and uh, we won the phone. So I thought that, you know, Bring her here and introducing her to you guys would have been perfect. Since I am in California, the sun is shining. It's nice out here. To give you a little, a little, a little view there. See that? It's too bad, man. It's nice. And today is Fast Fun Day Vlog, y'all. We here. Oh, hold on. My guest is here.
the sun is still up here, but way too dark. Oh, okay. So I have to set up up here. Okay. Right here. So All we right. here. Okay. Bam. All right. So where should I sit? You can sit on the left. Okay. You got some light. Yes, bouncing. Let's see. Yeah, get a I gotta closer. get more light. Yeah, you good there? I need more light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How is that? Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, it's better. All right. Yeah. We're trying to uh to get it worked out. So, <laughs> first of all, toast. toast. Salute. 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 Mm-hmm. Looking at water. Yeah. Yep. 30 years, y'all. Yeah. It's been 30 years. Some people said, oh, he gave it back. No. Nah. Because if they could have come to my house, you know, can get it. But it was done from the bottom of our heart. He gave it back. We thought it was the right thing to do. That's it. That simple. But, you know, when something gets into the into the media outlets, it's very difficult to turn it over. So year after year, I'm having to repeat myself. So this is one of those misconceptions. No, 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 we give it back. But because we give an interview to a journalist on that day, he went to the Grammy that same day and told them, oh, Robin Fab are planning to give it back. But they jumped the gun. And you heard it from the horse's mouth. Anyway, if you didn't know, now you know. Anyway, see what I'm wearing it. <laughs> Why not? Why Kirby not? Kirby seat to April. Absolutely. She hooked me up with it. Yeah. Well, it was a pure accident. <laughs> you know, because what we do here is, is live. You know, we, it's live in the sense that we ain't planning nothing. We just come in and have a conversation. It's the first time that I have I a guest. You know, I'm very pleased to have April Sutton as my first guest. So, you know, you want to introduce yourself? I just want to you say... You can do it better than I, than I can do it, so. I just want to say to all the viewers out there, we're just so happy to have Fabrice here in the City of Angels, Hollywood. As you know, he and I go back, way back to 1989. In fact, I chronicled uh, their whole career. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was there the night you all received your American Music Awards. I was there the night that you won your Grammy Award. And I'm just so happy to know that, um, man, you are just aging backwards. I don't know what you're doing, Fabrice, and I can tell. I think we're the spot now. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, because let me tell you, if anybody knows, I've seen the whole, the whole full circle of this great man. And I can't tell you enough how proud I am of you and the fact that you really are a real survivor through thick and thin. I mean, you are the type of man that we can all look up to and know that resilience does live on. Yeah, you got to yeah. be built to last, that's for sure. You yeah. have to yeah. because it's not for everyone. But I made the choice to stay and not to disappear. So that's why I'm, I'm here. But one of the reasons why I'm, I, I'm here is really the love for music. My love for music, my passion for music, my drive for music, and the fact that music is a medium through which I can really truly express myself the best. When, when you think about 30 years, 30 years, Fabrice, and where you are today versus where you were in 1989, talk about the parallels and talk about the things that are still the same, but what are the things that have been a little different now that it's 2020 and not 1989. As far as Fab Morven? Yeah. yeah. As far as Fab Morven, the parallels, I would say that um, my love for music never, never dwindled, dwindled, never, meaning I never lost love for the music. I definitely had a love-hate relationship with the business of the music business because the business of the music business has to take place. Nothing can happen without the business of the music business being handled. Nothing goes. So through the years, I've been very afraid of even working together with people because I knew that, okay, we have to sign a contract and then I go through the whole thing, gotta get the right attorney, you have to make the right decisions, make sure that whatever you sign 
with whatever you sign can affect you for many years to come. So I had that fear, but with time and experience, you know, you choose the people that are going to be part of the team, and then you don't have to really worry about that anymore. So those are the differences, yeah. you know. I've, yeah. I've, I've really understood that the music industry is a business, and there is the business as of, of the music business. Mm -hmm. Now, the other parallel is that I've always had this, this drive and, and hunger to get better. As a songwriter, as a singer, now as a producer, and uh, ever, ever evolving. So um, really excited about what lies ahead of my team and I, because it's not about just that more than without team, none of that could happen. And you know, April Sutton is part of my my little alumni. You know, I got to mention also my manager Kim Marlo, yes. who's been there for me for years and supporting me and pushing me, and and others and others, which I will try to introduce you while I'm here in California. What other parallels? Um, I love people. I always love people, and I used to trust people like very easily. Now, fast forward, I've changed that, and I've had to because you know some some of the mistakes you can make can really make you lose time when you look at the journey of the life and lifespan of you of a human being as an artist. So things that you do wrong can you can lose years as a result. So I've made sure to, to choose carefully, even to test. You know, I've had to test my friendships because I wasn't right. I wasn't feeling right and um, being used when people know that you're vulnerable and people take advantage, it hurts, you know, but the turtle went up the mountain very slowly and steady and has reinvent herself because in French the turtle is feminine in English it's the turtle but you know in French in certain languages is a feminine and it's a masculine la tortue in French and uh, I made sure that my, my scales my skin has become extremely thick so whatever people throw at me you know I'm, it doesn't hurt me anymore but it used to, you know, it used to. But because of the hard work that I put into myself, then my confidence has rose and I'm feeling great. And nothing can nothing can really affect me. So it's all about, you know, the legacy, it's about the music, it's about touching you all. And with that, by the way, we hear right now. <laughs> You know that one? That one's a good one, right? I'm getting the sun right here and I'm just pow, transferring it to you. One love! You know that one. I'm sure I could uh, go deeper into it. I could find some other parallels, but I think, yeah, I think it was a nice question. And well, nice you know, the other thing, the defining factors of the resilience, the fact that you were able to rise above the crazy challenges. I mean, do you think that it was a part of, you knew that you had a responsibility for yourself to survive? Was it for the love of the fans that you had to survive? Or was it for the music that you had to survive? And was it for Rob that you had to survive? I think that, you know, the, the surviving part was a reflex. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, a reflex. Yeah. So it's hard to explain, but my body said, mm -mm. We ain't going nowhere. Me, myself, and I decided to like, yo, we don't know how we're going to get there, but we're going to get there. You know? So my instinct kind of got in me. Like unconsciously, I just went for it. And I knew that I had to go back to the drawing board, which was, OK, I have to learn how to write songs. I have to learn how to play instruments. I have to learn how to produce. And I took that on and I, I kept on doing it regular and regular and regular and regular. And the closer, the, 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 the more I saw results, 
that gave me the confidence to say, you know what, I'm going to keep going. That's fine. So I think to answer your question, like, it was for me at mm -hmm. first. Okay. It was definitely for me because I wanted to, I wanted to prove to myself, yo, you know, you love music, you can do this. Mm -hmm. You know, you were singing, you know, you got in the first place into this because you were loving it. Things happen. It's another story. But the love for the music is really was, it, it kept on pulling me, even though it, I, I was hurt. But music saved my life. It gave me hope. That's what it is. You know? Music gave me hope. Mm -hmm. And then when I, when, I, when I got that, then as I was putting the pieces of the puzzle together, then Rob came into play and I was like, you know, my dude is gone and uh, it's for me, but it's also for him, for the legacy of Living Only. And I want the word Living Only to mean when you fall, you stand back up and you move forward. You know, like that. And of course, at last but not least, the fans. The fans have been here for me like for years. Like I said in another piece of movie that I put on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe, guys. Um, back in the early days of Facebook, I would find emails, like messages, and people saying, oh, you know, I love you, you know, keep going. And just like short little messages, but people let me know, like, we know you're still here, you know, keep going. Mm -hmm. And those few messages and those few fans that came around to show me love, it went a long way. You know, there were not many, but the few dropped some positive energy into my bucket. And this is why when I started to become more active here, I was like, you know, because, you know, you do things, you know, coming here, creating this, I just, I go with the flow. Be like water, like Kristen said. And I, as I do this regular on the regular, you know, every weekend I'm here, uh, you know, I, you guys are definitely are a big part of what I do because of that, that energy that you give me. So when you give me, I give you back. And there's a lot of music that's coming, you know, that's that's coming your way. And one of the reasons why I, 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 Rob and I rose so high is because of you, no doubt. So, you know, you're part of that, that unforgettable equation. Can't do it without you. So, one love. Yeah. <laughs> you know, back in uh, 1989, I'd like you all to know that when I first met uh, Rob and Fabrice, uh, at that time, really, Rob was doing most of the talking. Um, he had a very thick German accent, and Fabrice wasn't doing much talking at all. And when I hear you now articulating and communicating and expressing yourself so eloquently, I'm like, whoa. I mean, it really has been 30 years that I, I can hear you know, the, the enunciation and the pronunciation so clear and concise now, but also your vocals, your vocal quality, the vocal skills have just like upped the ante like a, a hundred notches. Because you haven't it's, heard. She heard some oh, stuff oh, that I oh, on, oh, so. Oh, it's, it's serious, okay? First nice. of all, let me tell you, it's unbelievable. And my, my question is, you know, what does it take for you to be able to get the skills and the practicing and, you know, getting the chops up to the level where you want it to be. I mean, of course, you know, in music, everybody's always continuing to grow. But where you, you are now to. vocally, where you are vocally, Fabrice, is, uh, is unbelievable. And how have you managed to get to that point? You know, stay on, staying at it, doing it every day, singing. Not only singing, it's just like feeling it. That, that's... Pretty much what I can say is feeling it, feeling your body as you sing. Breathing is a big part of singing. And uh, as through the years, as you know, being on stage, dancing and singing, you know, I've, I've experimented quite a lot. And, I, and I've realized that there were some nights where, well, I ate too late. Boom. And my diaphragm was act like I couldn't really get as much out of my Okay, we got shows, I don't we got shows, I don't eat earlier. Then I realized, ooh, I have more warming up before a show. So, you know, through the years, just figuring things out, just 
nothing planned, just going, going. I realized it was many steps. But as I'm making, as I've made, when I made these many steps, I was like, okay, that's a, that's a small step, but it leads to another steps. And at the end, when you look back, you're like, well, I made two, three steps. So four are really high. You know, I'm not gonna, I've talked about who my, my heroes are, my musical heroes, and uh, the standards are high. So I'm gonna keep studying, keep, keep at it, and maybe one day, I can't be called that, maybe, you know, but that's the drive. So you, you push yourself, you push yourself to get better and get better and get better. And then when you, you know, you'll see it. You'll see it when you get there. You see it, you feel it. And it's not just as a singer. You could be an architect, you could be an engineer, you could be a mechanic working on fast cars, you could be some guy that, that worked on low riders. He had his first car, second car, third car. Focus, dedication, discipline. You can't be afraid of hard work. And it included Prince. It included Whitney Houston. Yeah, it included yeah. Madonna. Uh, powerhouse uh, people in you were on that roster. Nelly Vanilli was on that roster during that time period. We don't have Michael anymore. We don't have Whitney Houston anymore. Many of the greats have, have moved on. Um, but you're still here. You're still here to celebrate Still you learning. to celebrate your artistry to celebrate your creativity um how do you go about celebrating when you're alone when you're at that moment at night maybe where you're reflecting on this course of a life that you've had up to this point oh you know the way i celebrate life is through music yeah every morning i'm in the studio boom that's my real because a song comes out of nowhere for me make a beat, melody, you sing it, you arrange it, you finish it. And I never know what's going, what's going to happen with it. Like, hold up, hold up, which is in the charts right now in France. There's more to come. Stay tuned on that. In the meantime, I keep working. And I celebrate music. My I'm coming for the ears. So in order for me to get to my standards, to go back to my standards, I'm making and making and making and I keep making and I keep making. And this celebration of life, because I celebrate, I lost Rob. It was heavy for me. My way of celebrating life, making music, is part of that celebration. Because I'm working on that. When you fall, you stand back up and you move forward. I stand for the dream and I don't know why, but I'm here. I feel like I'm here to inspire and to let people know anything's possible. I went through hell in front of everyone because, you know, people make mistakes in the comfort of their own home or surroundings. Everyone was looking at me like that. And, you know, it hurt, but it made me stronger. It can make you stronger, and it's not the end of the world. Yourself. And I can't and will never give up. Never. So I try to share that with you to give you that energy and positive energy. And I've heard it from many of you, you know, whether it's Tennessee, Slim G, Patricia, Lisa, Jenny, those are, you know, the people who come here and show me love. I'm doing that for you as well. So. And I go full heartedly into what I do. Because everything I start, I finish. And I come from the heart. So get ready. You know, uh, I think back on uh, so many moments uh, during the entertain entertainment era, during you know those 80s and 90s, and how music has changed drastically from that point to where it is today. I turn on the radio and music doesn't sound the same, of course. I mean, of music course. continues to evolve. Change. Um, but when you think about the uh, creativity part, like you said, you never know when the inspiration of the song is going to drop down. It just kind of comes from nowhere. So do you immediately stop and you start writing? Do you get a you know rec your cell phone and start recording? You go with the vocals vocally? You know, no, how that, What's that whole process like for you? Well, what I do is like I've noticed that when I'm in the airports or planes, yeah. 
while riding from the airport to the venue and to the hotel. I put my noise canceling headphones on and it was like, like almost meditation and everything comes. So weird, so it comes really quick. So I just keep on, I keep on writing, I stack, I stack vocal, I, I stack lyrics. And when I'm in the studio, depending on how I feel that day, what I feel like, about, like I feel like, what I feel like, or whatever the sound, because it's all about sound. So yeah. whenever a sound triggers me, and I go, oh, you know what, I think I'm gonna talk about this. I look at what I got right here, boom, I take it, and I start going. But the subject matter is is oftentimes love, love of self. It's important to me. The world. I like to talk about love, but I like to make it like I try to be uh, creative with the metaphors. You know, that's important. I just don't want to have like another love song that was too simple. But you know, simplicity is also an art form. So it takes doing and doing and doing and doing. And I always look at what's happening. You cannot not look at what's happening in music business. I'm also a DJ. So I listen to a lot of stuff. Every week I pick music that I play. And I love dance, electronic music, house, deep house, tech house. And I think it gives me another perspective on music. Because the dance industry is always experimenting with vocal, with arrangements, with sound. It's, I love it. I really, truly love it. Pop music is a little more linear, like they move kind of in one direction, as opposed to all those other style sounds always try to break boundaries. Yeah. You know, because commercial music is has to fit in a certain pocket. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's awesome when something that sounds at least kind of on the ground crosses over to the commercial side. There's, there's an art to, to do stuff like that. Well, well. You, you know, one thing that's really cool uh, that I'm noticing, Fabrice, is that right now, at this stage, me having known you since 1989, woo, okay, since 1989, ladies and gentlemen, this is how far back we go. You are really in this really cool comfort zone right now. And I'm really liking this spirit that I'm feeling because I have to, you know, underscore again that when I met him years talking and Fabrice would be standing there, you know, with the chiseled, you know, face and, you know, the outfit and the real cool vibe. And now to hear you talk so much and to articulate so effectively is so cool. You are at this wonderful, like, place right now. You know, my thing is, if you could go back and change everything, would you go back to 1989 and change anything that has happened? And if not, why not? Oh, man. Definitely fight for do anything I could to sing with brothers. Ah, give me a pound. Yeah. Did you hear that? 100%. Say that again. Say that again. I would do everything in my power, and even yeah. and if it wasn't possible, yeah. I would walk away because yeah. that pain. None of y'all want that kind of pain. Nobody wants that kind of pain. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's like to go to hell. Mm -hmm. I ain't got no idea. Maybe hell is on earth. Who knows? But I felt it. I tested it. I tasted it. And it tested me. And I test to y'all. You never want to go away. And I don't know if you know, but as part of that equation, you know, Rob and I were definitely like into drugs and alcohol. So when you mix those other elements, into what happened, you know, the insecure, how can I say, the insecure dimension in which Rob and I were traveling, it was confusing, you know, and as a, as a matter of fact, you know, Rob didn't make it out of that dimension of confusion because we were used and when we were like in one day when that happened you know there was a sense of loss i had a sense of loss he had a sense of loss but his sense of his sense of loss was a lot deeper in mine i anticipated this 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 punch that was coming but he didn't so when it came it would knock him out like ko but in my mind my heart of heart 
in my mind's eye, I told myself, I don't know, but I love performing. I love the stage. It gives me this feeling that it's, it's hard to explain because when you tasted that, that feeling, you know, in front of people and that love, because it's love. And when, when you give that love and you receive that love back, people are screaming and people are smiling and you meet people after the show and you, you, I give you an example. Like I think I've explained, I told that story. There was a couple who came, they were playing Native on the Devil. And it was like, oh, I don't know what happened to the kid. I don't know if he ever came out. But through the years, I kind of looked into this coma situation and I, and I read some stuff where people came out of coma and that the music really said like they were, it was an anchor for them. Mm -hmm. That music gave them strength. They couldn't speak, they couldn't move, but they could listen. And that's the power of music. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, music saved my life. It gave me strength to continue. And uh, it's taken me around the world. It showed me so many amazing things. And there's so much more for me to, to experience. Yeah. So it's been good to me. La musica, la musique, the music has been great. And so I'm gonna keep and keep on and keep my relationship with music because you have to work on it. it. It's not like nothing is easy. You gotta work at it. And I do it every morning and I have four hours, I'm like, wow, you know, I got something special. And uh Makes me feel great. So if you know, I say love what you do, I love what I do, and I'm gonna keep it going. Uh, more than Can we take a few moments to reflect on Rob? Uh, what would you like the fans uh, to know about Rob? I know many of you out there have probably read about Fab and, and Rob, and uh, but you knew him personally. So what would you like your fans to know and remember most about him? Um, Thirty years uh, as we reflect. Rob, Rob was. Um, up in an orphanage so he, he had a golden heart but he also had a void there was a void in it and he was trying to fill it you know like try to fill it with all kinds of things and um, when we were younger it was not too apparent I knew there was something there but you know we we're playing soccer and trying to get into the music going to studios experimenting with people doing our thing when, when success came, then that's when I saw there was there was something. You know, something. So he, he, he got hurt, but also the fact that I believe that you know any human being that comes into this world, if love is not part of their lives, then something will happen to them. You know that they, they will. Something I'm not a psychiatrist, but there's a lot of literature on it, and they will tell you if you have your problems. You know, and, uh, and unfortunately, Rob tried to fill that void with the wrong things, with the wrong people. And when we started to get into the drugs and rock and roll life, then he could not give him yeah. back. This, that's how I, that's how I looked at it. How were you able to get past those? So how did I, how did I go about making sure that I can make, I can make more of that, that music, that can touch people? Because I saw the reaction of Dirty Nose Crew, Baby Don't Forget My Number, Blame It On The Rain, Oh Nothing. You know, crazy, like to this day, like people are like, yo, I'm gonna miss you and stuff. It is that super special, like, they're all special. Mm -hmm. But this one, for some reason, because the chords got that gospel chords in there, yeah. like it's amazing to see how songs years later just affecting people, making people feel good. And I love music, you know. So I'm gonna try to get me like a girl don't miss you, a girl knows true, baby don't forget my number, blame it on the rain, my own written, produced <laughs> by Fat Morgan. That's it. That's my goal. That's been my drive. That's why I'm pushing. Like deliver so you deliver you with something very special. You know, I got that stuff for you. But, you know, we got the business of the music business, which I'm well aware of. 
So every step I make, every step I gotta make in order to the end, the end step is like, hey guys, here it is. But before that, here it is, guys, with the video, and it looks all like easy. Damn, look at that. But before that, there's so many steps, and I'm not the only one that goes through those steps. That's what every artist goes through. So we're approaching 38 minutes. We don't want to stay here too long. We're gonna look at what's going on here. Okay, toaster. We won't take questions. Okay. Do you ever go back? Do you ever watch those Miller videos? As a matter of fact, about a couple months ago, I watched Girl and Girl. It was, uh, I think it was, uh, yeah, it was Girl and Gonna Miss You, and I was surprised how good it was. I really thought, because you know, I stayed away from it for a very long time, and by accident, you know, I was like, oh, okay, let me check it out. It was very well done. Mark Beanstalk was the director. Good job. Yes. But you know, the thing is why I stayed away from the videos because it, it, it's just, it, it's all kinds of emotions that are, it, it's all kinds of emotions that are happening. Sometimes, sometimes I'm in the mood for it. Sometimes I'm not in the mood for it because obviously Rob ain't here no more. So it's like, mm. you know, because after watching the video, I would love to be like, Yo, bro, I just watched a video, like, yeah. oh, my God, you know, catching up, like, yo, remember that, bro? I was like, ah, oh, it's crazy, man, and look back, but I can't do that. The person that, that, that knows exactly what it was like to walk in those shoes is no longer here, so, you know, it's, it's bittersweet, but we had a great time together. We shared some good times, bad times as well, but it's nice we had some good times. Next question. Yeah. Let me see what they're saying. What do we got? Okay, let's see. I'm well. Activate LA. I'm good. You know, I I uh, I was downtown LA doing a photo shoot once. You know, there's a black man that came by and he said, "You look good, like fab." And I said, "Thank you, man. Thank you, sir." He's aging backwards. And, and he said, <laughs> he said, uh, but you know, looking good is feeling good. Sounds very simple, but it's true. I'm feeling good, you know, and it's because of my surroundings, my support system, the people that I work with, I trust, and I love what I do. Yeah. Let's see. All right, we got. It. I'm trying to pick a good one, right? Because, you know. Yeah. You've been asking some very good questions, so I'm trying to make sure like we, we stay yeah. on that way. Okay. Right. Okay. Let's check this one. Stan. Marlon Stan. Okay. Is this the love for music that makes you look so young? <laughs> uh, well, well, you know, the thing is, you know, people say, oh, you look so young, but I pay attention to what I eat. I do work out. I do my best to go to bed before 12 o'clock. Um, I have certain regimens, I have certain things that I've got to do for myself, and when I do them, I feel them great. When I don't, I feel the decline. So I'm like, oh, okay, so I gotta, I gotta, it's about discipline, you know, you gotta go to the gym, you gotta, you gotta keep going, and loving what you do, again, I, I won't stop, reiterate this, but loving what you do is, is, is the secret, because when you love what you do, you're not struggling with that, you love what you do, so try to find that, I know some people make mistakes, sometimes you get into the wrong thing, and you realize, Man, I've been doing this for so long. Starting over? Well, think about it. If you don't start over, you're going to be pretty miserable. And then it'll be too late. Because there is such a thing. Is there such a thing as too late? It's never too late. It's up to you about how much work and dedication you will put into it. Okay? One last one. You see what? If you see one, no, go for me. it. You tell me, you tell me, you tell me. Positive energy 
A Y J P M. Yeah, I can see it as well. Was that the Fleming? Oh, on the hat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is 100%. That's what, that's what the actual Grammy looks like. That's what it looks that's like. That's what it looks like. That's right. Yeah. I just thought today, why not? It's 30 years, y'all. 30 years, and I'm still here. And I still love the music. No, but no one will be able to take that away from me. Yeah. No one. No one. No one. that going. Mm -hmm. 100%. All that's right. Okay. I guess this is the end. This is the end. Okay. Slim J, Slim J. Resentful? No, man. You know what? It's about being. Am I resentful towards Frank Ryan? Listen, I think I've said that before. Live and let die. That's it. You got to forgive. Forgive them so you can forgive yourself. That's one of them. Holding a grudge is going to take you down a, a dark path. And the rabbit, the rabbit hole goes deep if you're not careful. Keep it positive. You know, forgive. Let bygones be bygones. Life is way too short. Focus on yourself. Don't focus, focus on others. You know, take care of yourself, love yourself, so you can love others, so you can love others and affect others. And if everyone would do that, then you create like this immense wave of positive energy. I have this analogy where, you know, if someone gets out of their, their house, happy to smile. They're on the road driving, the person's trying to cut them off, and the person that's trying to cut them off is angry. Smile. And then the other person is like, oh, you know, a smile can affect and have that smile travel. That same thing is a positive attitude. A positive attitude can create that wave, positive wave of energy. You feel me? Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> That's what we're doing over here. Okay. We are almost done. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I do my best to do my best. Ain't got no choice, everybody. Okay, well, I guess that's it. You know, it's a lot of positive comments. Yeah. But I was looking for a, a difficult, a tough question. Do you have a tough question for me before we leave? Uh, well, I do, but I don't know if I should. But, you know, my, my thing mainly is um, just the fact that, you know, you are standing here living your life, and you are living your best life. I mean, that is a thing that I'm just so excited to see in this whole, I say, evolution of you. Evolution, um, yeah. Evolution. Yeah, because, I mean, you you are just a shining example for, for millions of people to know that adversity does not stop you. Adversity does not detour no. what is meant for you. And if you're focused and if you understand what your real life purpose is, as long as you stay focused on that, nothing's going to stop you. It may slow you down a little bit, but it's not going to stop that's you. Right, that's right, that's and you are a shining example of that, Fabrice. Thank you. Thank you. So, she I mean, said it well. She said it best. You heard that? <laughs> April Sutton in the house. So, I Look mean. Damn, come on, y'all. So, Listen. I mean, to me, you know, the fact that you are standing, you know, a man of resilience, a man of inner strength, a man of determination, a man that has survived a storm to the umpteenth level that we've all watched. Those of us that we're chronicling here. Thank you, That's like right. like thank you. I'm here in Hollywood and I've been covering this stuff for many, many years on BET, of course, and CBS, but I'm just glad that you have so many loyal fans that continue to cheer you on and they applaud you. Thank you guys. And, and they give you the salute. That's right, you and all the people, and, salute. and right yeah. now some people came, came like in the live chat, but many more. So I guess this is it. Fabs from the love is over. One love, 
One heart, let's get together and feel all right. Until next episode, this is Fat Boy Van. Yours truly, y'all. Here we go from California. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Thank you. Until the next episode. Just April Sutton in the house. Thank you, April. Lovely you. to have you here. My you. first guest. Thank you. It's an honor. Part of my alumni. <laughs> to be continued. And stream. And string.